Now, following the U.S. assassination of General Qasem Soleimani, the Trump administration basically sent out Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to claim that Soleimani was, quote, actively planning to attack American interests in the region before he was killed. So that's one of the reasons they were going with. Uh, also, another one of the reasons uh, they went with before that was, well, it's in uh, retaliation to uh, a, a militant raid on our forces, uh, and we think that those militants are linked to Iran. Okay. So now Trump himself later on said uh, that Soleimani was planning imminent attacks on U.S. diplomatic facilities and personnel across the Middle East. Now, where's the evidence of that? Well, they didn't have any. Soleimani actually uh, was focused on fighting against ISIS. So he wasn't focused on attacking American forces. In fact, the reason that he had gained so much notoriety inside of Iran is because of his fight against ISIS. Now, that's not me saying that he's a great guy. I'm just pointing out the fact that he fought ISIS. Uh, now, nonetheless, uh, Trump claimed that this action was to stop a war. In fact, he said, quote, we did not take action to start a war. It's kind of funny. I, I mean, a little counterintuitive. If you want to stop a war, you don't actively bomb someone. I'm just saying, uh, assassinating someone rarely tends to prevent wars. Uh, I mean, look, if you doubt me, just ask, just ask Archduke Ferdinand how that turned out. Uh, nonetheless, if you don't know, that's, of course, the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand started World War I. Uh, history junkies, come on. All right, anyway. Uh, nonetheless, you had this narrative that was played out all over the media, right? Without evidence, right? Uh, our intelligence agencies made the claim, uh, and they said, yes, uh, he was uh, planning attacks all over the uh, – against our forces. Which, by the way, who put our forces there? We did. They didn't. So maybe we should not have our forces there, but okay. Anyway, um, the other thing about that is that it's the same kind of thing that we saw in the lead-up to Iraq. Oh, they're going to attack our forces. They're going to attack us in the United States. Um, they're, you know, uh, Saddam has links to Al Qaeda. Completely wrong. He hated Al Qaeda. Uh, and so we've seen that movie before. And of course, that movie went terribly, terribly. So I do not take a lot of stock in our intelligence agencies, unless, of course, you have receipts, unless you have some sort of proof, right? Now, the Trump administration is taking the opposite route only believing in the intelligence community when they have when they don't have proof. So, but of course, when has not having proof ever stopped us from going to a war? Now, let me go to a um it, here's an example of just how obstinate they are and and how 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 they just want to get this war thing just going, right? Uh, now, on a January 3rd State Department briefing where reporters got the chance to ask for evidence one official erupted in anger. He said, quote, Jesus, do we have to explain why we do these things? Why, yes. Yes, you do. You know, because we kind of live in some uh, in, in a democracy. And so, yes, we would like to know why you're trying to get us into another war. It would be nice to have some proof, right? Uh, but of course... You know, as Condoleezza Rice kind of put it, and I'm going to paraphrase here. Uh, hey, man, the smoking gun will be a mushroom cloud. Right. Okay. Uh, that means, of course, they have no proof. But we do have a little bit of information, which could prove, uh, disproves Trump, uh, Trump's narrative. Uh, so now this is according to Iraqi Prime Minister Abdul Mahdi. Now, so um, the Iraqi Prime Minister is supposed to be our ally, right? The country of Iraq is supposed to be our ally, work together uh, to fight against ISIS. Uh, and so, look, you believe him or not, right? This is what he's saying. Uh, Abdul Mahdi said he had planned to meet Soleimani in the morning that the general was killed to discuss a diplomatic rapprochement that Iraq was brokering between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Now, could you imagine Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia 
kind of becoming friendly, right? And trying to stabilize the region. Now, I think the State Department saw that and it lit their hair on fire. Oh my God, no, we can't have these guys working together. What are you going? What, what are you doing? No, no, no. This would be terrible for our foreign policy, which our foreign policy is basically we go and invade countries for natural resources, for oil, for corporations, and then we continue to spend more and more money and increase the defense budget uh, so that these same corporations, the defense contractors, keep getting money, keep getting rich. That's how that's how we're doing these things. That's how this thing is done, right? So now, right now, we actually do have a deal with the Saudis. We ignore their terrorism, and they are a state sponsor of terrorism. 15 out of the 19 hijackers in 9-11 were Saudis. They practiced uh, and spread the most fundamentalist strain of Islam. That's uh, Wahhabism, right? And, and so they're responsible for a lot of the terrorism in the region. But since we buy cheap oil from them, we ignore all that stuff. We ignore the fact that they kill people for apostasy, that they cut off people's hands and they, they cut off their heads and they kill people for witchcraft and homosexuality, things like that. But hey, look, they sell us cheap oil. So <laughs> you know, we're just going to ignore all the terrible stuff they do. But anyway, now Saudi Arabia is supposed to be our ally. But uh, of course, they're, they're not a very good one because they do happen to kill U.S.-based journalists. For example, uh, uh, Jamal Khashoggi, who was literally dismembered inside of a Turkish embassy. So... Yeah. Uh, now, nonetheless, they're supposed to be our ally. Iraq is also supposed to be our ally, right? Now, that works out for us. That also works out for Israel because then we're all supposed to be against Iran. So how would you stop that? How would you stop uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq suddenly becoming more friendly, getting on better terms? Well, you sabotage the process. So now if it's true with the U.S. trying to sabotage the process, uh, it, then it's huge. It would mean <clears throat> that we bombed a guy who allegedly was trying to stabilize the Middle East because it's not politically convenient for the U.S. and our financial interests as well as the interests of Israel and the Israeli right wing, more specifically. Uh, now, this is on the word, again, of the Iraqi prime minister. So now... Abdul Mahdi also said that Trump personally thanked him for the efforts to create peace, even as he was planning the hit on Soleimani. So again, Trump had known about this. The State Department had known about their efforts to try and broker a peace between Saudi Arabia uh, and Iran and knew about Iraq's role in that. Uh, now, this created the impression that the Iranian general was safe to travel to Baghdad. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that would be like basically luring him in to a predetermined time and place so they could do a drone strike on him and make sure that they got him. Because there are several times, of course, that Soleimani had been attacked uh, and considered dead to just re reappear somewhere else. So what better way to do this than, of course, pre-plan it when he's trying to do the auspices of peace? So, man. So now this came from, uh, uh, this is a quote from uh, Abdul Mahdi. Uh, and it was tweeted out by Mustafa Salim. He said, quote, I was supposed to meet Soleimani at the morning the day he was killed. He came to deliver me a message from Iran responding to the message we delivered from Saudi to Iran. So now, again, if this is a peace mission or it was a peace mission, then we just committed one of the worst acts. I know the justification, of course. Well, he's a bad guy. He fought Americans and he killed Americans. Okay. That was, of course, during the Iraq war. Yes, his forces attacked our soldiers. Who put our soldiers there? Oh, right. We did when we illegally invaded a country based on false pretenses. So we shouldn't have been there in the first place. Uh, nonetheless, okay. I still don't like the fact that he attacked and killed our troops, of course. Uh, but... I mean, that's it is the nature of war that we attack them, they attack us, on and on. Uh, so now, 
as far as him being a bad guy, right? Well, so is Duterte, the leader of Philippines, right? <clears throat> so is Kim Jong-un, Vladimir Putin, also a bad guy, right? So do we go and bomb those people too because they're bad people? There's kind of a reason that we don't. It's because we don't want to start wars with every single country and kill every single bad person out there. Because it would create even worse conditions. Now, Trump, again, also doesn't seem to have an issue with a lot of those guys. Uh, in fact, he seems to prefer the company of dictators. That said, this action should also be reminding people of the assassination of Mullah Akhtar Mohammed Mansour. Now, if you hadn't heard of him, I understand that. However, let me give you some details about him. Now, this was back in 2016. This was during the Obama administration. Mansoor was a Taliban leader in Afghanistan. But he was different from most of the other hardline Taliban. He actually wanted to negotiate a peaceful end to the U.S. occupation in Afghanistan. So, look, uh, that entire war, and we found this, of course, we knew this for a while, but it was confirmed when the pen... Uh, not Pentagon, but Afghanistan papers came out that we had essentially been lied to that entire war as well. Uh, and that we were there for essentially no reason. Bin Laden was in Pakistan, wasn't in Afghanistan. And when he was, we had him cornered in Tora Bora and we just let him go. So now the Obama administration, instead of doing actual peace deal, and getting our troops out of Afghanistan, instead, we drone striked Mansoor and killed him. Which, of course, had the result of empowering the hardline figures in the Taliban, which led in an increase of violence against our troops in the country. So that led to even more death and more targeted attacks against our soldiers. That's what happens. So, but look, that was during the Obama administration. Now we have Donald Trump, who is even worse. And so we're there basically forever. Donald Trump wants to keep us in Iraq forever, uh, as well as Mike Pompeo. And now uh, we're doing the same thing in Iraq. I mean, it's a disaster. And so you know that, by the way, what doing this makes Donald Trump, other than, of course, a murder, uh, makes him a liar. Remember, he campaigned against forever wars. I mean, he even tweeted out very famously that Obama was going to start a war with Iran to boost his sagging poll numbers during an election year. Well, now we have an, we're in an election year. Donald Trump has pretty terrible poll numbers. And now we're doing the same thing, threatening to start a war with Iran. Uh, but here's more information. Now, according to certain officials, Pompeo has been pushing this for quite some time. In fact, he pitched assassinating Soleimani to Trump months ago. And in the wake of the general's killing, the U.S. official revealed to the New York Times that the NSA had intercepted communications the United States had between Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah, uh, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, and General Soleimani. So now what did that intercepted information reveal? We're going to be shocked to find out that it revealed that there was no imminent attack by Soleimani on our forces. No imminent attack, no justification, no reason, and worse, during an alleged mission of peace in the area. If you wonder why people in that part of the world hate us, well, it's not because of our freedom. It's not because they hate us like that, because they hate us. No, it's because we have a, a, a history of constant meddling in that region and doing things exactly like this. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, 
You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.